British artist Clive Head has been described as the most significant painter of his generation. At the heart of Head's work is the notion of transcendence. Although his paintings seem to evoke the chaos of London life, they also take us outside it. In earlier times, transcendence meant the desire to move away from earthly things and to move nearer to God. But for many of us now, Transcendence is a more vague desire, simply to get away. But that desire has always been there. It's the desire to return to the mythical paradise from which our ancestors were expelled. But while the paradise of Eden can seem very distant, the paradise of art is very near. It can even seem very familiar. And yet it remains just out of reach on the other side of the picture plane. In the autumn of 2010, Head Station exhibition at the National Gallery in London. It was an exhibition I found myself strangely part of. Sometimes when I visited the exhibition, people would come up to me, point to the painting and say, that's you, isn't it? When you think about it, it's a strange thing to ask somebody stood in front of you, that's you over there, isn't it? But in a way they were right. That is me, isn't it? But in truth, I was always left floundering by the question, and like Rousseau's Galatea, could only repeat the phrase, this is me, this is not me. Or rather, this is me, and this is not me. To understand this, we have to go back to another part of our religious history, which happens also to be the starting point for Western art. To Western eyes, orthodox icon painting can seem a long way from modern art. And perhaps it seems a very long way from the avant-garde art of Clive Head. But the truth is, icon painting is the origin of Western art. And the same principles we see in an icon painting also underpin the work of an artist like Clive Head. But that connection has nothing to do with subject matter. It's to do with the transcendent space of a painting. It's the ability of the artist to take simple materials and fabricate new worlds in which space and time operate differently. This can seem very alien in our society. We tend to assume the function of art is to give us messages about the nature of our own world. It's as though we expect art to function like an advert, signifying meaning, not to sell us something, but to tell us something about our lives. But in Greek Orthodox art theory, the image is not a signifier. It does not symbolise the thing it represents. It is what it shows. That means to look at a Greek icon is to look straight into heaven. It's as though the image transcends the materials from which it's made, and becomes a magical window between the space of our world and the space of heaven. And because the nature of that space is very different to our own, we can see in it things we cannot see in our world. We can see angels and saints. We can even see God. So what if we see Clive Head's paintings in a similar way? What if these are not representations of London? What if the contortions of space Head fabricates were so extraordinary we could not possibly experience them in our world? We could only experience them in another world, 
in an alternative reality. So if head takes us outside our world, our reality, where are we? For the orthodox icon painter, the answer is perhaps easier. We are looking at heaven. But this is not heaven. This is an extraordinary combination of space. And its relationship to heaven is simply that it exists outside the space of our world. This is London, but this is not London. This is me, but this is not me. This is me in a space I could not experience in our world. This is me in a perfect world without chaos and confusion. This is me in a world without time. This is me and this is not me. As an artist, to conceive of the space of a painting as transcending the space of our world is to enjoy limitless freedom. And as a viewer, it gives us the opportunity to see worlds we have never seen. The only restriction on that is the technical ability and the creative imagination of the artist in fabricating those worlds. And the ability of both the artist and the viewer to have faith in this essential function of art. Art always begins in the mundane reality of our world. But true art always transcends that reality. It ends up defining a space that is extraordinary. And it is in that sense always a window out of our world into a kind of paradise.